This is Larry Hedrick for Mysteries of Superstition Mountains, where we bring the past into the present for our future viewers. Today we have another great story by Jack San Felice. I was new to Arizona and I wanted to put this aside. I wanted to either say there was something to this or there was nothing to it. There was there gold out there or was there not gold? Well, I spent a lot of time hiking out around Weaver's Needle and searching. Now I have five little stories of my, of my searching of Weaver's Needle, the area around Weaver's Needle. In fact, how did I, I think, this is how I got to, to Arizona. It was because of Weaver's Needle, actually. My wife and I in the 80s, we hiked the Peralta Trail to um, Fremont Saddle and got that great view of the needle. And I said to her, and she decided she wanted to move where it was warm, someplace warm. She wanted to move to Arizona. So I said, okay, in 91 and 92, we're going to hike in August the Peralta Trail. And if we can survive in August and make it in and out okay, we could live there. She says, that's a deal. And so we did it. In 91, 92 in August, we hiked for all the trail. And we hiked it up, we hiked it down. There weren't many people in August hiking there. But in fact, one time, there was nobody. We were, we were it. So we got the top and back. Make sure we had enough water, whatever, whatever. I knew where a water hole was, we could refill, whatever. And so we did it. So we decided to come out here and buy a house. So we come out. And I moved in the fall of 92. I come here. So in 93, when I thought I was, had a job, in nine, I didn't have that job. It was a political type of job, as I learned. So I didn't have it. So I'm now searching around Weaver's Needle for Jesuit treasure, and treasure signs, and lost gold, the Dutchman's gold, fairy tales. All the searching around it, didn't find one piece that looked like any mineral uh, that contained malachite, chrysocol, or azurite, and that's the foundations of copper. And if you got copper, there's a good chance they're gonna be gold in Arizona. Not there. So on one hike, we go up there, and we search around Weaver's Needle, and we're looking around, and, and down below, just past the needle, in 93, I found a place, we found a place, my partners and I that were hiking, where the water came up out of the ground and ran like a stream or river 200 yards and then went back under and disappeared. I said, this is amazing. At least we could get water from there. If Piper Spring, then we could have it. That was an amazing phenomenon. Next time. Next time I get the weaver's needle, we're searching around the base and we come across a skeleton of a deer, some deer horns, and it's a miniature deer. I said, wow, this is really weird. I didn't know there were miniature deer out here. It had antlers and it was only about as big as the dog, the skeleton. So I, that was my first experience with miniature deers. I, I didn't know they were here. So while we're on our, I'm on my way up a little bit, and my partners are down below me, and they're coming up. There's a guy on the Dutchman's trail above us. He, pull, he whipped out a handgun and starts shooting at us. It sound, he must be shooting. I can hear the bullets whizzing over. And we shouted at him. He didn't do anything. So some of us whipped out our handguns, sent a few missiles his direction. Next thing we know, the man in the blue jacket takes off running. And he takes off back toward Fremont Saddle and into wherever he disappeared. Now, there were a lot of people coming to Fremont Saddle that day. Nobody ever saw a man in a blue jacket. My guess was he took the jacket off or he went down Geronimo Cave Trail out of sight where they could see him. But now, a few years later, I come across the man who tells me a story. 
of a guy that goes in, went, used to go into the mountains and shoot at people who were hikers or climbing rocks, rock climbers. And they told me who the guy was. And I met this guy, and he sure did fit. He sure could have fit the description of the guy that was shooting us, at us. Don't know. That's one of those mysteries of the mountain. Now, the next story is, is my last story about Weaver's Needle. I'm hiking with a doctor and his wife and a friend of mine, and they want to see the needle close up. So we go Fremont Saddle and then down, and then we go past the needle, and I wanted to show them where the water comes up and down. And sure enough, it's still there, the water, not as fast, but it's still there coming up and out. So they want, now they want to hike further to see something else. So I said, okay, but we got to make a decision here. We've hiked it at Peralta, but we're now close to the halfway point. If we hike where you want to go, and I'll be glad to take you, we've got to go out the other way out of first water because we're going to be out of water and it's going to be a long hike back and we'll be hiking in the dark. And the hike down Peralta Trail in the dark is not something we want to do without flashlights. Even if it, we had flashlights, it's not a good thing to do. So they said, sure. But I said, my friend said, yeah, I know where there was a water hole. I know where there's a spring. We'll go there. We go where his spring is supposed to be. Guess what? He had guaranteed us. Guaranteed was worth nothing. There was no water. I said, no, I know where there will be water. And we go, because I'd hiked in from first water at this place. And we get there, and guess what? It's not just a spring. It's not just water. It's a swimming hole. So my friend and I, we decided we're going to jump in and go swimming. So we jumped. Uh, we reduced our, to our skivvies, and we jumped in. The doctor waited in. His wife didn't come in at all. But we cooled off, re reloaded with water, and we hiked out the first water, and I was able to get some transportation to take us back 28 miles that is all that way around, back to Peralta, where our vehicles were lucky. They didn't break into them. We got them, and we made it home, I think, about 2 in the morning. That's about 18 miles to go that way, the way we went. It's a long, long hike. Thank you for watching this episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains.